Hey guys, it's Randy with Zengara Designs, and we're here with another really super cool unicorn spit project. Today I'm going to show you guys how to get some awesome fall colors and make your own festive wall art for Thanksgiving or the fall season. So we're going to go ahead and put this aside and show you how to do this. Stain, paint, and glaze all in one. It comes very, very concentrated. And for the purpose of this project, I went ahead and diluted my colors in the smaller containers about 20% with plain water. So let's get started. We'll start with a little lemon kiss. And I grabbed these syringes. If you're going to dilute in the smaller containers, it's a really good idea to grab some dosing syringes. You can get them at the pharmacy or like a, a feed supply store and be able to apply your unicorn spit with the dosing syringes. So we're starting out with some lemon kiss. And there is just really no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting this. I'm just kind of giving it a good, a good squirt all over. Now we're originally from New Jersey and we've been living in Florida for quite a while now, but I still miss the fall colors. So every year, I seem to come up with a project that gives me my fall colors right in my house. Because when you look outside here in Florida, it's still all green and pretty. Whoops. Told you, it gets a little messy. <laughs> and this is our Phoenix Fire Orange. And I'm probably using a little more product than I normally would. But I really want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing and a little molly red pepper and I'm actually using the same syringe to pull up all my colors because when we're doing this they're all going to sort of mix together a little bit anyway so if I've got a little color mixture inside the syringe I'm not worried about it for this one so we've got some molly red So do you all decorate for fall, for Thanksgiving? Are you taking down your Halloween decorations today? Where are you all from? What's going on? Talk to me. Okay. And just to add a little bit of contrast, I am going to use a little bit of our Dragon's Belly Green because we still have a little bit of green going on in some parts of the world, right? Just a little little contrast so it doesn't look like all one color because of course if we use the red, the yellow, and the orange, red and yellow make orange. So we might end up with 50 shades of orange. And just a little bit of brown. Now there is a brown available. I don't have it here. It's called Squirrel. However, I made a little bit of a darker brown mixing my Phoenix Fire and my Black Midnight Blackness. So we're just going to just pop a little bit of brown, again, just to add some contrast to our project. And if you notice, I am sort of concentrating a little more around my border because that's where I want the coolest effects. A little bit in the middle, but we're going to pretty much paint over quite a bit of that middle. Okay. Now, even though we diluted about 20% on each color, I am going to give this just a little bit of mist with plain water just to get things moving along. Just a little bit. And again, I probably used a little more product than I normally would. I really just want you guys to be able to see what this does. Now, this is the cool part. Um, this is actually called the stain press technique and you can do it on a lot of different projects. And what we're going to do is take a piece of plastic and basically what I did was, I'm not sure where that box is, but anyway, what I did was I grabbed some dollar store trash bags and just cut them straight in half. And we're gonna lay that right over our project. The dollar store trash bags are 
great because they're thick enough not to tear and yet they're thin enough so you're able to see how you're manipulate, <laughs> manipulating your colors underneath. And then I'm just going to sort of go over all of this with my hands. And if your colors aren't moving as well as you'd like, spray your plastic and your hand glides over just a little bit easier. And again, I'm not completely concerned about what's going on in the middle, mostly my border, my edges, and you can sort of kind of mush and gush your colors, cover as much as you possibly can, let them mix and blend, just give it a little, a little mush. And like I said, the dollar store work, uh, plastic works so well, simply because you can see exactly what's going on underneath. If you've covered what you want to cover, if your edges are done, you just kind of give it a quick pull around your edges. And you want to try to get rid of some of those spots because you really don't want it to look like an animal print with just a bunch of colored spots. So just manipulate the colors underneath your plastic. Okay, you guys, are you ready? This is so cool. Okay, and then carefully lift your plastic to get your colors underneath. All right. So as you can see, again, I'm not I'm not worried too much about the middle, but if you can see some of our corners and our edges, how gorgeous those colors have blended together. Especially up here. Can you get that top corner in it before it all starts to run down the board? Okay. Depending on how thick your color is, it probably will take about 30 to 45 minutes for this to dry. Of course, we're not going to sit and wait for this to dry. When it's dry, we're going to put this aside, but when this is dry, it's going to be like a little dull and chalky, just like with our other unicorn spit projects. And what you're going to do is give it a quick coat of oil-based sealer. I love the Helmsman, the Spar Clear Gloss. Give your whole project a really quick coat of oil-based sealer. It's very important to do it at this particular step. Okay, ta-da! So this is one I did for you guys the other day, and it did come out a little bit darker. I think I have a little bit too much brown, looks but... Like, looks dry. We'll be able to, yeah, we'll be able to um, definitely get some cool effects with this. And this does have the coat of oil-based sealer over it already. So we don't have to wait for that to dry either. Okay. So then what I did was I went to my computer and I Googled <clears throat> leaf outlines and printed a bunch of leaf outlines on cardstock. If you use regular paper, it's a little bit too mm -hmm. thin and it'll absorb um, the paint that you're going to use with this project as well. So cardstock's a really good idea. And I just Googled them, saved them, and printed them. I resized them. So we've got all kinds of really cool leaves, and then I cut them out. All right. As you can see, we're going to position them. And those who asked to. that they noticed that I'm not saying what the comments are, I I'm sorry. My throat hurts. <laughs> I'm just trying to save my voice as much as I can. Okay, but if the, if you guys have comments, I mean, you know, shout out. Nick will be all right. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to position, whoops. We're going to, uh, nope, I don't like that there. So we're going to position our cardboard cut, I mean, our, our cardstock cutout leaves around the board. Now, of course, you can do anything. You can do them all on one side, you know, make yourself some corners, um, whatever you would like to do. But leave a little space in the middle because we're going to go ahead and, and put some kind of, some words or some sentiment or something in the middle to make it a little more festive. Okay. Now, I don't really have a favorite paint, so I'm just going to grab something that I came up with. I just mixed up 
a color. This is just a very light beige chalk paint. Grab your favorite paint and a paintbrush. And we're just going to dry brush right over these cardstock cutout leaves and over our entire project. So let's just load up and then offload a little bit because we're gonna to wanna to dry brush. With one hand, hang on to your leaf, and the other, dry brush your paint over it. Now maybe some of you have seen uh, similar techniques. I've done this a couple of different times with themed projects. You don't have to cover the whole thing. Those little bits of color that are peeking through your dry brush are really going to add dimension to your project. Yes, it is, Brenda. What's up? You're asking if it's plywood. It is. It's just a plywood cut. Um, I'm very fortunate my husband will do these so I can use them as demo boards for you guys. I don't always have a large piece of furniture to demonstrate on, so... He makes sure I have plenty of plywood cuts all the time. And you can if you want to use it uh, for well as your sign. You can go to your local hardware store, your Lowe's or your Home Depot, and check out the cuts that they have there. Sometimes they actually have rounds if you want to do a round sign. And last project we did, I told you to really notice the green if you're going to go um, you know, pick some plywood cuts for your project. This one, not so much. You're not going to worry about the green. Okay, so it does get a little messy, but we are dry brushing. This is just a chalk paint that I sort of mixed up in my lab here, and it's just a beigey color, little contrast to our bright, vibrant unicorn spit underneath. And just sort of work your way around the board, holding down your leaves and brushing over them. What's the size of this board again? Um, I think this is like a 16 by 14. This is a little bit larger. And I like the larger ones, especially if we're demonstrating, because you guys can see so much better with a larger piece. And certainly you can use any size that you would like. So do you guys decorate for fall? Do you decorate for Thanksgiving? Um, do you take the stuff down that normally hangs like in your dining area and replace it with some themed art? I love to do that. Take everything down, drive my family nuts, put all, I'm going to do a little bit more in the middle, um, put all kinds of neat stuff up for the holidays and then take everything down, do it again for Christmas. Especially in my dining room. Because it just seems like if you have people over, that's where everyone sort of congregates, your kitchen and your dining room. So I like that to look the most festive. Okay. So just a little more than a dry brush. And as you can see, some of my colors are starting to peek through, and I want that. Just adds a little bit of dimension. Okay. You ready for the big reveal, guys? Can you all see this? And just pull up your leaves. Cool, all right? Okay, just a quick quick tip before we move on. Um, if you do get bleeding underneath, um, sometimes that happens. I have a little here on the stem. Two reasons why we do the poly first. We want to make sure that our colors are nice and vibrant in our leaves. And also, it'll protect if you need to go in with a damp Q-tip and just sort of pull that paint out of where it doesn't belong. Your unicorn spit won't run because it's already sealed with your coat of poly. So you can just kind of go in and clean up a little. It does happen as careful as you can possibly be. We're just using some cardstock so you might get a little bit of bleeding underneath. But not bad. 
And like I said, damp Q-tip, fix it right up. So again, we need to let the paint dry. We're not gonna, we're not gonna worry about that right at this moment. Y'all don't have to sit and watch paint dry today. So we'll put this one aside as well. Here, let's do this. I'm running out of room back here. Oh my gosh, look, it's dry. Okay, um, this one is an, another one that I did. Um, as you can see, I was in a hurry to get all these done in the stages for you, so I didn't do a lot of cleanup on the leaves. So let's make believe these are as perfect as the ones we just did. And again, I went back to Google because I don't have a pre-cut, I don't have a vinyl cutter. Um, I do love the Mylar stencils, but I get a little crazy and buy too many. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I have an idea and I don't want to wait for eBay or Etsy to deliver. So I went in and found Thankful and Blessed, and again, printed it on cardstock, and grabbed a piece of my plain old transfer paper. And I got the large sheets on Amazon. Just make sure it's on the right side. And these large sheets are amazing because you can use them over and over and over. It's kind of awesome. Okay, here's the tricky part, guys. You have to sort of kind of feel out where the middle is. Maybe lift up a little bit on each side. Make sure that your words aren't going to bump into your leaves. Kind of center it as best as you possibly can. There we go. And just grab a regular pen. And go ahead and trace your letters. If you... Um, need to tape this down, I recommend just a, a little bit of painter's tape. It may stick to your paper, but it'll help in the long run. So we're going to go ahead just with a regular pen and a heavy hand and trace our letters. <coughs> How's it going, Nick? Mm. First time I caught on video. That's true. Sorry about the call. The weather changed here. We had a few really cool days over the last few weeks, and then today, again, it's extremely warm. Um, so it's probably a recipe for not feeling well for a lot of people, including poor Nick. Okay, so we're just going to go over our image as best as we can. Like I said, cardstock works because your pen won't rip through the paper as easily as if it were just a plain piece of paper. I print everything on cardstock because not only can you use it again other than the painted leaves, we can use these again. It doesn't tear. And cardstock, I have a tendency not to use it as scrap paper. If I print everything on regular paper, I have a tendency to pick it up and use it for grocery lists or scrap paper to write ideas down and then I don't have my, my images. So where's everybody tuning in from? I know we're, we're trying to limit Nick's voice because he sounds froggy. A lot of people are like stateside, but I see Canada, Ireland, I saw one awesome. from Iraq. Wow. South Africa. That's, that's wonderful. I'm glad you guys are all here. Okay. Now, if I can show you, it looks just like a pencil mark. Thankful and blessed. And this is where the cool part comes in because you really, I mean, even though we're going over somebody else's image, somebody else's, you know, printout, it's just such a neat thing to be able to hand make something that hangs for everyone to see. So I'm going to grab my liner brush and my, my brown unicorn spit that I made with some Phoenix Fire Orange and some Midnight Blackness. Okay. However, there is a brown available. It's called Squirrel. And we're just going to go right over our lines. Can we move up just a little bit? Harry, can you guys see this? 
man. Got my pant leg. <laughs> What's going on over there? Got my pant leg on the, oh, no. the chair. Technical difficulties. You know what's really cool? I should have done it for you guys, but while I'm doing this, we can talk about some alternatives. If you wanted to flip this over and do a Christmas one on the back, like the, you know, something very similar, do Mary and Bright in the middle with a stained press Christmas tree or some ornaments all around it, and then you can just flip it over and have cool wall art for both parts of the holiday season. Would anybody want to do that? Would anybody try that? Good idea? Crazy idea? Let me know. Yes, this will work on canvas. Yes, it will work on canvas. I happen to um, prefer wood canvases for a few reasons. Number one, it's a resource that I usually have readily available. And number two, I've been working with Unicorn Spit for a really long time. And although it can be used as a paint, a stain, and a glaze, I tend to favor it as a stain. And I like the way it looks on wood surfaces the best. And she's not actually using paint for this. She's using Unicorn Spit. I am. I'm using Unicorn Spit. A few reasons. I like the fluidity. Um, I do. I mean, you can you can dilute this to where you're comfortable using it, and also the color matches completely the unicorn spit we used to make our leaves. I sound that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I sound that way because I'm not feeling too well. Nick has some weird sore throat thing going on, some sinus thing going on. And we really think it's probably from that weather change that we had here in Florida. So sorry about the froggy voice, guys. But I'm not sorry, because without Nick, I have no cameraman. So for Nick, I am thankful and blessed. <laughs> See what I did there? Lame. He called me lame. For those of you guys who don't know, Nick's my kid. So when I say lame things, he kind of calls me out, as most kids do with their parents, right? Okay. And I'm sure a lot of you, if you hand letter things, um, you have a specific paint that you use or a specific product. But trust me when I tell you, Unicorn Spit is so so amazingly easy to use doing hand lettering because you get to control the fluidity of the product. If it's a little too thick, just go in and add a little water. And it can be diluted up to about 70% without losing the vibrancy of the color. Although I really don't recommend 70% if you're going to letter because it is a stain and it may run just a little bit for you. But if you guys can see how easy it's going on our project. So not only was it an awful lot of fun to get these colors to all intermingle, but you can use the same colors. And you didn't have to use brown. You could use the orange for your lettering or green, whatever matches your decor. The darker color is easy for you guys to see on camera. And I kind of like it. Believe it or not, my house is dark. I have a lot of dark um, decor in my house, and you would think my house would look like a rainbow because I use bright colors in all my projects. Hey guys, when you're asking what unicorn spit is, I'm... I'll, I'll repeat it. Just just say mom unicorn spit, and I'll repeat it. Oh, Mary Doherty's watching. Awesome. She's always watching. I know. Mary Doherty, if you guys see her in the in the comments, she's a retailer. She does sell unicorn spit. So she does know what she's talking about. Absolutely. So she's... when she posts that, you know, it's a good idea to 
you know, read what she says. That's true. Um, typically when we do one of our videos, there's someone in there helping us answer questions. Um, even when Nick feels well, he can't see all of them. And, you know, we're very lucky. We're very, very fortunate. We get a lot of viewers and you guys ask really good questions. Um, typically there's somebody in there helping out and answering your questions for you, but I certainly will. Let's go over Unicorn Spit again. It is a vibrant colored gel stain. It's a water-based product that is a gel, stain, paint, and glaze all in one. It is highly concentrated. Yes, she is, Pamela. What's that? Are you free-handing this? I am free-handing this. Right over that, that um, image transfer that we did. And I am just going straight over those lines. They look like pencil lines when you use the transfer paper. But if you guys, if you're just tuning in and you haven't seen one of our videos before, I do a lot of work with Unicorn Spit. Primarily that's the medium of my choice because there are so many things you can do with it. And like I said, it's a very concentrated product. You can mix up to 70% dilution and use it for a bunch of things. We're doing a wood project today, but you can use it on glass. You can use it on canvas, metal, plastic. Just make sure that if you're using unicorn spit, you're sealing with an oil-based sealer. We are almost done. And for those of you guys tuning in, as soon as I get this done, we'll go ahead and go back over how I got the letters on here. Okay. So that was done nice and quick with Unicorn Spit, my, my mixed up brown. And as you can see, it looks very similar to our finished project which was this one so we're uh, pretty good to go these need to be sealed as well be if you're using unicorn spit for your lettering I recommend another coat of oil-based sealer because if you use a water base your letters may run so I recommend another coat of oil-based sealer if you're using this to letter and how I got the letters on before we are just about ready to wrap up. Printed on cardstock. Found this on Google. I just Googled um, Thanksgiving inspiration or inspirational thankful quotes or something like that. And this came up. It was nice and easy to print. And um, I just printed it. You can resize these if you want them smaller or larger for a project. I recommend block posters. Sometimes the clarity isn't that good on block posters, but you can see the lettering and your, it's easy to trace. And I just grabbed some tracing paper and put it underneath, traced my letters. So I didn't do too bad. I know there are some spots where I could have probably went a little bit thicker. You can always go back and use this as a reference, but I think we did all right. So basically, the only thing left to do is seal this project, and I'm not gonna go ahead and do that on camera. We're gonna wrap up for now. Um, like I said, we've got some fresh fall leaves, some gorgeous colors, hand-painted design for your, your wall art. Um, take down what you've got in there now and hang up some great stuff for Thanksgiving. And let me know if you decide to do this, because I think I'm going to. You can always flip it over and maybe do some uh, holiday ornaments and merry and bright or what you know whatever kind of holiday sentiment you'd like. And then you can just flip it over and use it for both parts of our holiday season. Is there anyone with any quick questions before we sign off for today? Anyone, Nick? Uh, it's your last chance to sound all froggy on camera. How did you get, how did you do the leaves? How did I do the leaves? Okay, let's recap Someone really. Someone like just got in and they're asking that. That's fine, we'll recap really quick. Um, this still isn't dry, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you one more quick time. 
how I got the leaves on here. So this is the stain press. This is what we did underneath. And I'm gonna just try to find a small dry spot. Eh, we'll put one here. <laughs> and what I did was I went to Google, I found some leaf outlines. Yes, Angela, it is. It's plywood. It is. It's just a sheet of plywood. Um, I do them <clears> a lot, especially for the demonstrations here on Home Talk. It's a lot easier. So I cut these out. I printed them on cardstock, just like this. Cut them out. And just grabbed my favorite paint. And did a little dry brushing over the leaves. This one may not come out perfect because it's starting to curl up already from the water. <laughs> but this is how I did the leaves for those of you guys just tuning in. Yeah, it's starting to smear and I apologize because this is uh, not quite dry yet, but you'll get the idea. So I just kind of held it down and did a quick dry brush over my reverse stencil to get our leaf images. And I, I, I apologize, I know that's not perfect, but my unicorn spin underneath isn't quite, quite dry yet. I just wanted to go over that really quick and thank you for asking that question. Anyone else before we go for today? How would you hang it if you did both sides? Good question. And I thought about that actually as I was saying it and I will give you a good answer. I was thinking maybe we could just, because it is a plywood cut, maybe just get a couple of um, small eyeballs and screw them right into the top ledge. Just a few small little eyeballs and then use either <clears throat> some picture wire through them or some decorative string, some, maybe some, um, you know, uh, like macrame jute, and then you can just flip it over. Or just one. Oh, Since it'll be up against the wall. I mean, you can if you wanted to use one big one and then just be able to turn it. But typically eye bolts are, you know, they're, they're screwed in. So you can always just turn it a little bit and flip it over. Or, like I said, you know, run some picture wire through it. And I think that's how you would be able to do a double-sided. So maybe if we get a chance to come back, we'll do the other side for Christmas. Anybody else before we go? Where'd you get the tracing paper? Amazon. Amazon. Um, just search tracing paper, and they have it in smaller sheets as well as the large sheets. Um, I also believe that like Staples and some of your um, office supply stores will have tracing paper as well. Uh, Carol asked... I missed it a little bit ago. Favorite brand of brushes? Oh, my favorite brand of brushes. Dollar Tree. These are three for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. Um, you can rinse them out and reuse them, but if you use them for like your oil-based sealer or something, you can toss them and not really have to worry too much about your brushes because you paid a dollar for three of them. And they come in three different sizes. This is the medium size. Um, I love Klingon brushes for other projects. That is my absolute favorite. But for something like this, I recommend just going to the Dollar Tree. What colors did you use? Unicorn spit okay, brush. let's go over really quick, and then we really need to wrap this up, guys. Thank you so much for the questions today, though. I am thrilled. So my orange is Phoenix Fire. My yellow is Lemon Kiss. My green is Dragon's Belly. My red is Molly Red Pepper, and I mixed my own brown. I happen to not have the brand new brown that was just released in October. It's called Squirrel. Um, I don't have one to show you, and I apologize for that. But I went ahead and grabbed Midnight Blackness, Midnight Blackness, and mixed it with my Phoenix Fire, and I got my brown for our project. Amanda, I'm not unhappy necessarily. I'm unhappy that I'm sick. I'm just... <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so on that note, let's let Nick go. And thank you all so much for tuning in today. I hope you liked our project. If you have any questions or um, any comments at all for me, you know where to find me. My link to my page is uh, posted on Facebook, and you can find me on Home Talk as well. Thank you all.